Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be how I prepare Quincy's homemade baby food. So one of my awesome subscribers asked how I store his baby food in the ice cube trays when I talked about the trays in a Dollar Tree haul. So I have made and stored the food in a video for you showing you how I do it. It is so simple and so easy to do that if you have the ability or the want to do it, then you should definitely do it. I am really, really passionate about making baby food for both Bobby and Quincy. When Bobby was little, I did the same thing. And I just like to read and get as much information and recipes and ideas as possible. So I'm going to share two websites or two baby food things that I find really, really helpful. The first website is wholesomebabyfood.com. It is an awesome site on starting to feed your baby solids. Not only is it just for when you're beginning, but later on it tells you what foods to introduce, when to introduce them, how's the best to introduce them, how to make the food. Um, it's just a really informative website. It's also more on the conservative side, so they they talk about starting at six months, they start talking about waiting to give babies honey and peanut butter and things like that. So if you are on the conservative side with starting solids, this is a great website for you. They also have different recipes and just, it's really a great re recipe. So I'm going to link that down below if you are interested to check that out. I am also going to be linking an Instagram mom who makes some of the best baby food recipes I have seen in a long time. So instead of having to go out and buy one of those baby food books, you can look on her site and she does some really unique combinations for when your baby is bigger and has explored different options. Uh, I would definitely check out her Instagram and it is Itty Bitty Baby. And I believe she also has a blog, but I follow her on Instagram and she is awesome. So, those are the two things that I will say. Um, I have started Quincy at four months. I started Bobby at four months, and that was fine with me. You just want them to practice, and that is all baby food is really meant to do when they are that young. It's getting them to learn how to swallow, open their mouth, and swallow the food. If your baby looks like he's not ready, just keep trying. It's not going to hurt. You don't, you're not going to be filling them up with baby food. It really is just practice, just getting them oh, used to different tastes and textures in their mouth. You really want to make sure that they're getting all of their nutrients from the breast or from the bottle, and that you're giving them just the food as a as an extra added bonus. Let's get on with the video and see how we make peaches and sweet peas. Be sure to leave any comments you have for me about it down below. I would love to answer them. Make sure you check out those two websites because really when you're starting off feeding your baby solids it's so like what should I do and do I need to feed them this first or that first but this website really gives you a lot a lot of useful information. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you're subscribed for more videos to come and let's get started. I am just using the um, yellow canned peaches. I have wiped, washed them off really well because they were in the syrup so I want to get all of that syrup sugar off of them. I washed them really good and we are going to be using them for our baby food. So my water has come to a boil and all I'm using to do the steaming, which I prefer to steam all of his baby food. If I don't steam it, then I bake it. I never boil it just because that takes away all the nutritional value. So if you are going to be making baby food, you want to make sure that you're either steaming it, cooking it in the oven, or blanching it, which is like cooking it really, really quick at a boil and then cooling it off in cold water. So if you do not have a double boiler or if you don't have a steaming pot, um, you can use this. It works fine. It's a metal colander. I use a lid to help it steam and then just um, a Dutch oven or a pot. And you want the water to come to a boil. You stick the colander inside and we're going to put the fruit inside and steam it. I'm going to keep an eye on the... I'm going to keep an eye on the peaches because they don't need to steam for that long. You really don't want to cook the food for that long. You want to try to keep all the nutrients in it. Overcooking it takes away the nutrients. So we're trying to cook it for the shortest amount of time, but you want to make it soft and easy for your baby to digest. So we're just going to stick in our peaches. And then we're going to put the lid on. So we're going to keep an eye on that, and it should probably take like three to five minutes, I would say, but you just want them to be soft and easy to digest. So let's let them steam, and we'll come back. 
So when the peaches were done, I just set them in a glass, um, a glass dish to cool. You can either, it, you can uh, blend them hot or you can let them cool first, depending on what you want to do. I, they're still pretty warm, but I am going to blend them now, um, just because I have the peas going. But you can let them cool first. You always want to try to let them cool in glass so that you're not having hot plastic. So we're going to um, now put them in the blender. When it comes to pureeing, you can puree in a blender, you can puree in a food processor, a baby bullet, a nutri bullet, you can use a hand mixer, you can even use your hands, but I wouldn't recommend that because that is going to be really hard. I have a small blender that I got from Target, it was $23. If you're able to do something like that, I would suggest spending the money because it's really, it's a lot easier than, um, than doing it by hand or trying to find a cheaper alternative. That's probably the cheapest. You can get a little hand mixer, but if you're going to be doing big batches, um, this is probably the best way in a blender or a food processor. So we are going to add our peaches in. There's still some liquid left from the peaches, so I'm not going to add any liquid. I prefer to add formula or breast milk, not water if I don't have to, but I did reserve a little bit of water if I need to. I have recently read that they don't recommend freezing formula, so I am going to try to use the reserved water if I need to. Now I just have mine, I'm going to put it on puree. It's not the best of a blender, it does take a little bit of work. But peaches are pretty simple, so it should be pretty simple. So we're just going to hit puree and watch it go. If your baby is like Quincy and just starting out, you want the puree to be thinner. Um, you want them to start to learn how to swallow, so the older they get, the thicker the puree can be, but peaches are good because they can get nice and thin. So I'm just going to transfer it back into the glass to let it cool. Once the puree is cool, then we will add it to the ice cube trays. So these are just canned peas that I have washed, and we are going to steam those. We are now just going to add our peas. And these are the same thing that goes as the peaches. You don't have to steam them that long. You really just want to make them easy to digest. But you do not want to overcook them, so it's important that you keep an eye on them. And we are going to come back in about three to five minutes and see how they're doing. So this is how the peas look when they are all steamed. They're nice and soft. I touched one. They will smush up easily, um, and that's what you want. Again, you don't want to overcook them. I have transferred them into a dish to cool. I am going to puree them hot and then leave them cool like the peaches. So you just want to add the water little by little. You don't want to add too much water, so blend, puree it, add some water, uh, puree it again, see how the consistency is, but you don't want to um, add too much water formula or breast milk. I would suggest if you are breastfeeding and you have unfrozen breast milk, use that because it's so much better for the baby. If I didn't see that about formula, I probably would have used formula. That's what I did with Bobby, but I didn't know that you weren't supposed to freeze the formula. So I'm using the water now just because I don't want to freeze the formula, but if I had breast milk, I would be using that instead. Add a little bit of the water. transform to the dish they should look something like this so I'm gonna take my bag and I'm gonna write the date on it and write what it is the food will last for three months in the plastic bags in the freezer if you want to keep it in the fridge it will last for three days so I just use a sharpie and write the date and what it is so we have sweet pea
So what I'm going to do to make easy pouring is I'm just going to pour it in this gravy boat. It's going to make it easier to pour into the trays. You could use a spoon or um, when I do it cold, I do it right from the blender. But you can do it however you feel comfortable doing it. over here are a little bit thicker so if they're too thick when you go to unfreeze them and feed your baby you can always add the breast milk or the formula to thin, thin out the puree so we're just going to like I don't know what do you call this bang it <laughs> but you want to make sure that the all of the tray is full filled with food and then we can go and wipe it up if it's um if anything spills over I like to add some parchment paper over top of it just to cover it up. Unless you're buying the the ice trays with a lid, I would just suggest covering it. I feel more comfortable covering it. Um, they now sell them with lids, so you can go and you pick up those if you want to have a lid as well. But parchment paper works perfectly fine for me. Parchment paper, wax paper, anything like that. And we're going to just press it down and fill up those cubes. So when the ice cube trays are frozen, this is how they're going to look. This is broccoli that I did yesterday, and it's been in the freezer overnight. So I'm going to show you now how you take them out. Um, I know some people have said that they find it hard to get them out, but I find that running it under warm water is the key to success to get them out of the ice cube trays. If you are going to be using these kind and they're, you're having a hard time twisting and getting them out, these ones are gonna pop out super easy. But if you are having a hard time getting them out, just flip it upside down, run it under warm water for just a few seconds. Don't get it wet, just run it under the water and then they will pop out easy. These ones popped out easy. You can see that they're lifting up and they're gonna be easy to get out. So we're just going to put them in the bag. I have this bag already labeled. It says broccoli and it has yesterday's date on it because I made these yesterday. And we're just going to put them in the bag. I just dump them in like this so it doesn't make a big mess. When they're frozen, they're just going to be in a cube shape and you can put them in the, in the bag and you can store them for up to three months. So this is how the broccoli bag looks. And that is your frozen baby food and you freeze it. When you're ready, you take out one or two cubes and you put it in the microwave or thaw it however you want to thaw it and you'll be good to go. Um, I find that when I make a bunch I don't normally let it sit for three months. It normally only lasts for like a full month, maybe a month and a half and then you have to make more. So I try to sit down and make a bulk amount in one day but other than that it's so simple, it's so easy.